वेलकम लिसनर्स वंस अगेन वी आर एट लिटरेरी गोवा द प्रोग्राम दैट लुक्स एट बुक्स एंड ऑथर्स फ्रॉम गोवा अबाउट गोवा टुडे वी हैव विथ अस मारिया दिसो बरेटो हु हैज बीन टीचिंग पोर्चुगीज फॉर अ लॉन्ग लॉन्ग टाइम एंड शी इज कम आउट विद अ बुक कॉल प्रैक्टिकल पोर्चुगीज ग्रामर अ कंप्लीट गाइड फॉर स्टूडेंट्स एंड टीचर्स Uh, Mrs. Barreto, first of all, congrats because I believe your book is almost sold out in. Uh, It is sold out, yeah. The in first one edition. Year. In one year. In the first edition is over. I'm going for the second edition now. I see. Yeah. But anyway, to start the story at the beginning, tell us about your experiences as a Portuguese teacher. Since when? At what level? I know you yeah. also retired at the Goa University. Yeah. yeah. So tell us about uh, that. Well, I started long back in seventy before sixty eight or somewhere. Yeah. Then uh, I taught at Debe College. In between, I got married. B.A. B.A. I got yeah secondary. Uh, that was inter that time. Inter. <clears throat> inter arts and inter science, <clears throat> and then I I and B.A. Yeah. And then I got married. Yeah. And went to Germany. Yeah. So my, all my I was away from the country for nearly twenty years. I see. So I lost my job. I lost all the career of uh, teaching. Yeah. When I came back, there were no more vacancies. Yeah. And suddenly, one friend of mine told me, "Marichao, oh, there is one vacancy at Dempe College. I see. Would you like? Would you? Would you be interested? It's on lecture basis." I said, "Fine." Which I, year? Which year was this? That was in '88. '88. I said, "Fine." Uh, um, of course, I live close to Dempe College, yeah. so, but it's on lecture basis, and they pay only twenty rupees per I see. lecture. I see. I said, "Okay, I'll go for the. I go. I'll go for it." My husband said, "You're going for twenty rupees." Yeah. And you, you're paying your maid more than that. <laughs> I said, never mind. It's my, it is an uh, opportunity that I have yeah. to use whatever I've learned uh, during my lifetime. And so I started Dempe College. I loved it. And after that, I got an offer. I did an, again an MA. I had MA in French, but the university would not uh, would not accept it. They yeah. wanted six papers in Portuguese. I see. So I did again an MA in, in Portuguese with six papers. And I joined the department. After it was only some few years. After that, when I retired, I retired at 58. Yeah. Mr. Barika took us two years from from the from the retirement age. So at 58, I retired, and then again was invited to teach at uh, Institute Kamoish. I see. Continued there till I retired from till I found that I should give opportunity to the younger people, and I retired. And now I give courses at home. But really, one to one, you know, yeah. very uh, not many. So I don't want to get to be very tired. Retired, but not tired. Retired, but not tired. You are so, right. Yes. So you uh, <clears throat> in 1961, you were in uh, college, school no, at that time. Yeah, at that time I was in school. I was some point in 15 years at that time. Yeah. And uh, it was a big change for us, you know. Very We, drastic, no? Overnight, overnight, you went to sleep speaking Portuguese and had to get up it, yeah, speaking it was, English. It was it was really traumatic. Yeah. I remember the first after we were given the equivalents from the from, from seventh year lyceum, so we were <clears throat> given to interarts. Interarts. So interarts, we went there. It was totally a different system. Yeah. And we our English was very very basic, rudimentary, rudimentary, so very basic. And we went. To, there was a group uh, of uh, coming from lyceum, yeah. and we were all together, one giving the support to to another. And we we said, okay, we'll write down. All that the lecturer says, yeah. so that we'll have the the the, the matter, and then we'll go over there. Everybody with a pen and the uh, exercise book to write down. I remember exactly; it was the history class, and the lecturer. Who came, was the teacher? Uh, one one from from uh, from Madras. I see. So he just his English was a bit hard, and he spoke very fast. So he started the lecture, and he started. No blah 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 blah, and we were our pen was just then we could not write a single a single word. So we said, well, I think that is the we won't be able to, we won't be able to to get through this. And then we sat in the library and one 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 cap chapter we had to read wow. many times to understand the concept. And fortunately, the system is all system is such that if you learn well and if you reproduce it, yeah, you, you get, get the you marks. Get the marks. And that's how we 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 manage. Language language can be a very difficult uh, yeah. thing. It can be a stumbling block. It can be a passport yeah, to a yeah, better yeah, opportunity. Know, yeah, yeah. So of course we'll talk about your days in uh, Germany and Brazil later. But tell us about your book. What got you into doing it, and uh, why do you feel the need for another Portuguese grammar when there are so many Portuguese grammars mm-hmm. coming out from Portugal and Brazil? 
I know, yeah. See, uh, when, I, when I was teaching, normally I speak Portuguese in the classroom. And but sometimes students understand, sometimes not. When, when it's required, I, I, I switch over to English. But when it comes to explaining grammar, I always use English. Because I've seen that when I use Portuguese, they don't understand it properly. And grammar, first, first you have to understand the explanation. Then you can use it. And this continued forever. Then I one day I thought, why not write a book with uh, all the explanation in English and example in Portuguese? You don't get these in Portugal? I don't know. I've okay. not seen here. Yeah. But uh, the, the books we come, we receive from uh, Portugal, they're all Portuguese, Portuguese. I see. So even there are some books written here also in Goa, yeah. also where they, they have used English. But I, I wanted to write a different one. Okay. And uh, so it, it is a, it's an idea. I asked many, many of my colleagues uh, in school, what do you think if I write? He said, it's a very good idea. I Go see. ahead. So I did not start just like that. There are others who said, why one more grammar? You are a person from literature. Write something about literature. Don't go for language. Just see. But I said, if I write language, there will be more people who will be benefited. But you were right because uh, not only has your book sold out, but there are people who ask for it and they cannot get it. I know, I know. I, yeah. I, I think you're going for a reprint. I'm going for a reprint. Yeah, yeah. It's come, it will come in this so, year. So in that sense, uh, what does the book contain? Can you it is. It is not introduce? only. Yeah. It is. It's a book which has got three sections. So it's not only explanation of grammatical concepts. In the first part, I explain the grammatical concept. I follow the CCI, uh, CCFR uh, uh, Common European Framework of of, uh, of, uh, of language, and according to because they outline the portion uh, that's for A1. This is for A1 and A2. That's a certain grade, no? A certain starting, grade, starting, starting at the basic and the, and the. Uh, Intermediate? Intermediate level. Okay. So I'm, I, I'm not, for example, I'm not dealing here with conjunctive. Conjunctive is the... It conjunctive? Doesn't conjunctive. It doesn't exist in English. Okay. But in, I'm not, because that goes into B1. Okay. So I've not yet started doing B1. You know, as you see, publication is expensive. You know yeah. it for yourself. And I didn't have any sponsor. True. I did it on my own. True. And if I do the... There's a risk involved, no? There's, there's a, a risk involved. So I, did not, I myself did not know whether I would be... Uh, how, how the book would be received. Yeah. Whether it would be sold or I would be... How many copies to print and whatever. How to might They were asking, go for 1,000. I said, no, my God, I don't go for 1,000. Let's go for minimum, that's 500. And uh, in 500, I said, suppose I sell 100 yeah. copies. But they were sold just... Very good. Very, very good. good, very good. But uh, three parts, tell me about the three yeah, parts. Three parts, the section three. First section, I, I, uh, I speak about the grammatical concept. I explain all everything in English. Hmm. I give the example in Portuguese and give it a tra translation in English of those examples. So they know exactly what they are, what they are uh, doing. So if they want to write a sentence, I explain how to write a sentence, how to start, because the greatest difficulty for the, our students is to write uh, correctly. So if, we, if, they, if they use the system SVO, subject, verb, object, you get a correct sentence. So I give various examples of writing a sentence and I go further with all the concepts of the uh, CC, CCFR. Uh, and uh, the second section, yeah. I give the, expl the exercise, the grammatical exercise of the concept they have learned before. Okay. So they can practice. It's not only theory, but there is the uh, practice. Then there is again, and then at the end, there is answer key. Yeah. So they, they solve, there's no need of teacher. They can themselves can solve and see whether the exercises are correct with the answer key. And the third section, I've seen when I was teaching in the, the high secondary level, the students have a lot of difficulty in writing a dialogues. And at the exam time, there was dialogues, dialogue writing. And they normally, they scored very little in those uh, dialogues. I see. So I, I, uh, I give various, uh, various situations for dialogue at the restaurant, at Tato, at Mosley, and all those asking and the soft food, shop, various types of yeah. dialogue with the go on, go on flavor in that. The direction. interesting thing is that all these examples have a very strong go on flavor. They go all on, set in exactly, Goa. They all set in Goa. Exactly. So this is something the students they could identify, identify with. Identify. And I don't give uh, ready-made dialogues. I okay. give sentences which can be used in the dialogue. If I give ready-made, they would just memorize yeah. and, uh, and, uh, and, and write. No. I give sentences, you frame, 
And if you want some sentences different about from what you've been uh, writing, here are the sentences. So I think that's also helping the, the students. And again, in the third section, I put another section of uh, expressions used in day-to-day -day conversation. You know, like, uh, uh, Merry Christmas, thank you, uh, not yeah. thank you, uh, thank you is too easy. Yeah. But so some, sec some, some expressions which we use normally and we don't know uh, that those are important. So those, those sentences also, the phrases are also included in the book. So they can So tell it. us about your own experience in migrating outside of Goa to Germany and Brazil, yeah. if I understand right. It was, yeah, you know, when you are young, you like to, uh, when you like to see the world. See the world, yeah. And I said, okay, let's go to where my husband was studying that time in Germany and then he had just completed his course. And then we went to Germany. Of course, I learned German. You learned German. I learned German. You have a felicity with languages. Then. Yeah, but then it's easier to learn a language when you are in a space where only that language is spoken. That's why some people ask me, why do you need grammar? What happens to the people who go to Bombay and then they learn, they are not there, they, they don't know anything about grammar, but they speak. Yes, you can do that. But you should live in a space where you are surrounded by people who speak that language. And for Germany, you have no choice. No choice. But now, take it our example. I speak Kokni fluently. Yeah. I never went to school. I never learned Kokni. How did I? And then my Kokni is correct. But it's not an erudite Kokni. It's a day-to-day -day, uh, spoken, spoken, spoken. spoken Kokni. Why did, how did I learn it? Because the space was where everybody yeah. spoke Kokni. So I, I learned it that way. So, but if you want to leave, what about our students? They have only that one hour or for 35 minutes of Portuguese. After that, they have no contact more with the language. Of course, we'll come to that next. What is yeah. the best way to learn a language? But okay. tell us about Germany and Brazil. Yeah, okay. Because <laughs> we, we, I want to hear that story. Yeah. No, Germany was nice. I taught there in a school. Your husband was an engineer. He's My a, husband he's is an, he's an he's engineer. Yeah, but he was just, we were both young and yeah. he was just starting. And, uh, Which part of Germany? We went to Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf yeah. And uh, of course, I learned mostly uh, uh, German from the TV. I see. So sometimes my expressions was TV expressions, you know. I see. Say, come on, say it. I, I used to say, she's in the lows. You know, when the cowboy, cowboy and okay. all that. Okay. So those expressions, so the people used to laugh. You know, it was I just see. A, I see. But, but then uh, they was also quite uh, happy that I could speak, could manage to communicate myself. Of course, with the dictionary. I used to go shopping always with the dictionary in my hand. Germany is 98% German, like 98%. No, English, nothing, nothing, no English, nothing, 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 nothing. Only German. So people get shocked when they go there. First, exactly. First time, yeah. So you uh, you are forced, forced to, to forced to. And then after time, you become you. I also worked in some companies. I see. As a as a, a correspondent, I where you required German and and English. I see. So I managed made use of your other skills. Other other English and. And then you all shifted to Brazil in which year? Yeah, that was in seventy five. Seventy five. Both your kids are born there. Uh, no, one is uh, one is in German, born okay. in Germany. The other one is born in uh, in Brazil. International family. International family. Goes. When I go, I have three four passports. <laughs> <laughs> different passport. They are looking at me. <laughs> How come this lady has got this? So so then you're in Brazil, your husband was again working in engineering. Yeah, because he was sent, it was a team that was sent from Germany to uh, to Brazil. This is the car manufacturers? Or? Uh, no, it is a steel manufacturer, steel. yeah. Which one? Uh, Manisman. 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 So we went to uh, Belo Horizonte. Yeah, in the north. In the, in the, in the central, central, you know, that tri uh, triangle. Yeah. Uh, Rio, or Sao Paulo, Belo. Yeah, I see. Yeah. So we went to Belo Horizonte and uh, of course he was chosen because of the language also because he speaks Portuguese I see. and then German of course he's, he, 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 he started in Germany and he was one of the uh, one of the persons who was in the in that team and we that he worked there for some years and after that we moved to Sao Paulo I see. and I love Brazil you know. It made me feel my view. Feel at home, feel at home. Yeah, feel feel like at home. And after his contract was for three years and said, you can go back to, yeah. to Germany. I said, no, why should we go to Germany? Let's stay here. Climate is good and the and language is good, good and the people, people are, are friendly. Good, friendly. Food is very nice, you know. Yeah. So so we uh, we continued. And maybe that was a mistake because yes. after some time, inflation was so high, so high. This is in the 80s. 80s, yeah. So 80s. it was so high. That per day they also come with the you know that changing the the currency, current, the, the the price. Price. What stickers. was it? Yeah, well, stickers. So what was in the morning? It was not the same thing in the evening. It took tick every whole day, uh, day. So then we thought, well, we have to yeah. decide. Either we stay here 
and we'll have so many cruisers at that time for a few dollars. few dollars. Or we come back to Goa and look after our things and put yeah. this thing all done. And if you want, we can come back. Yeah. So I had some property issues. So I said, within two years, I'll be able to settle settle the issue yeah. and we may we can go back to, to Brazil. But life has its own logic and life has and then the judicial system has its own logic. <laughs> it took 25 years oh and still it's not over. My goodness. So God. that's what uh, that's what it is. So we never went back. Of course we went as a tourist later I but we never, we never went back to, to Brazil. So the point I get from your story is that uh, language can also be an asset. Yeah, it is an asset. It is. it is an asset. You never know when you can use. I'll give you another example. My son did his engineering uh, here in in, in the K K I R C uh, Suratkal. 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 So uh, he finished engineering. Was working for some company, and suddenly, uh, uh, what is that company that uh, that I know fails my from Hyderabad that now uh, it's, it's no more there. Uh, Satyam or one? Satyam, Satyam. Satyam. Satyam wanted somebody to open their shop in Brazil. I see. They were looking everywhere. There should be somebody with Brazilian nationality. Only Brazilian I see. can open. I see. And they did not get. So I gave a course at the university for for Satyam uh, engineers. Guru engineers. Yeah. So they came to the university and uh, the university arranged and I was one of the persons who gave the, that course. And in that, they were saying, see, we are looking for somebody with a Portuguese, uh, Brazilian passport. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. And then, I don't know, that's good, was it destiny? Yeah. He was born in Brazil and he went back to I Brazil. See. Yeah. And then he was chosen and he was sent there to I open the, the, the yeah, company please. there. I see. And uh, unfortunately, for after some years, the yeah. company was closed. Satyam folded yes, up. Satyam, yeah. Yeah. And, but but he, it's a great opportunity, I think. And uh, yeah. in today's world, do enough Goans see language as a passport to a better yes, future? Yes, of course. Including yeah. Portuguese? Inclu yes, Portuguese is one of the six most spoken languages. Yeah. So most of the students from the Goa University who do the MA, pass the MA, they don't stay here in Goa. They don't, we, are, we have got a lack of teachers. I see. Yeah, they, they, don't, they don't stay for it's because it's payment, payment is very, very small. Yeah. They go for companies where they start only with fifty thousand and and so on, you know. So yeah. why should they Correct. teach? And if if you had a son or daughter, I would also do the same Correct. thing. So Correct. they do the the post graduation and immediately absorbed in the corporate world. Another point that has come out is that many of the students in Goa are actually from Delhi University or North India, and they understand the importance of learning, learning this language, language more than we do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we we don't maybe because we are accustomed to Portuguese. We everybody knows Komshta, Komshta. Yeah. They think they know Portuguese, but and they don't give that much. But they will go for German, German. They will go for French. They will, you know, they forget that Portuguese is so important because all our documentation is in yeah. Portuguese. History is in Portuguese. Oh, see, everything Lots is Portuguese. Things, yeah. yeah, yeah, they forget that. Your and books. besides, you have got opportunity to join the the corporate world uh, because true. of Portuguese. You know, they're always advertising for people uh, knowing yeah, the yeah, Portuguese yeah, skills. Know, yeah. I, like I know that. one company that came here looking for engineers who with Portuguese, and I was one of the person uh, invited to interview yeah. the the thing. Can you imagine? There was only one person. Uh, they, 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 they were wanted somebody to send to Brazil. I see. And no Goans were there. I see. And there was one who was outside outsider, not a Goan, and he was chosen and he was sent to Brazil. They take the language very seriously, no? They take whatever they do. They put put in effort and hard work. Yeah. That's anybody can learn the language. Sometimes they go and say, no, oh, but I don't know. I don't know Portuguese. I said, thank God you don't know. Why? Because you then learned wrong. Yeah. And to make you to speak correctly is a headache, yeah. and you never do it yeah. because it's already ingrained in your system. Yeah. So, but the the, the 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 I call it outsiders, but people from the other state, when they come, they take it as a new language. Seriously, seriously. Seriously, and they learn it. They go. They study because they have their mind, their 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 job in mind. You know? But over the years, Mrs. Barreto, how has the learning of Portuguese and attitudes towards Portuguese among young students changed in Goa? Because we know in 61 there was this break suddenly and then there were uh, yeah. bad relations till 74 or whenever. Exactly. And after that things changed, but they changed slowly. So even yeah, in... You have to because most of the students who would take Portuguese, yeah. they started taking French. 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 And this, there was still against, especially in the... Politically. Uh, politically, that the thing, they were against po po yeah. Portugal. So parents preferred to go send their children to French. Now it's changing. Now it's changing. very, Sorry, very much. Changing yeah. very much. We have now... 
uh, uh, nearly 20 uh, schools where, where they are teaching it's Portuguese. Taught. Taught. Uh, there are more than 800 students. I see. For, for, for Portuguese, taking Portuguese. Right up to the MA level, it's also available. Uh, as available a, uh, up to the MA level. There's only a uh, university, the only university where... In India. In India, where there is a post-graduation post -graduation in Portuguese. Maybe in Asia also? In Asia, I don't know why China has got, because I when see. I went to Macau for a course, there was somebody from uh, from Beijing. I see. Maybe they have... Really? The, yeah, yeah. They so, are smart about... Uh, yeah, because yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. not only Portugal, I think uh, it's also a link language to Brazil, Angola, Mozambique, and see the, which are huge markets. See what China has done to Angola. All the Chinese, all the uh, workers, all the um, development in Angola is done by the Chinese. And they speak Portuguese? They must have spoken because, okay. they, because in Macau, there is no big, I mean, no space, uh, uh, place for, for, for most students. I see. It's full always. I see. Full? Full. And I think, why, why not India? Why could Indians go to Correct. to Angola, to Mozambique, and help in developing yeah. their country? Would there would be jobs? There would be money. Yeah. There would be everything. That's true. But we have got a political still that reluctant, reluctant to go to a country where and yeah. English is. They prefer to go where English is spoken. English is too dominant here, and yeah, also know. Uh, you know we we have that resistance as you were saying to go beyond the comfort zone. Yeah, exactly beyond, yeah. and we don't like to leave uh, Goa. Yeah. That's how you know. Even my son saw when sometimes he he works in uh, Bangalore, and he said, "I'm fed up with the vegetarian. I'm fed up with this. Fed up with that." I said, "There yeah. are thousands of people working there, and see, and he doesn't know the moment he will come back to Goa." If yeah. we could stay forever in Goa, we would. We like we like our home state, and home that state, is a yeah. that is a, a weakness of sort. That is, a and then when yeah. we go, we don't come back. So that's another weakness. <laughs> another so. weakness. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but as far as uh, teaching kids goes, what's your experience with Goa today? Teaching kids in Portuguese. I think there's more, much more interest now than than there was than before. ever before. before yeah. But while you know, one one thing is teaching in the at the school level. The other thing is teaching in the courses. When the course when I taught at Kamoj. The interest was much more because they were coming because they wanted to, they uh, to want learn. Of their own wish. Of their own wish. Whereas in school, this one of the languages, they do it just to get the passing marks and that's uh, that's over. But of course, there are some students who are very dedicated and they score 96, 98 even. Wow. So all that, yeah. But when when you go, when even when I at home and I give the uh, course, mine is mine are always one-to-one -one, uh, courses. I can see that I, I really uh, appreciate the work they put on and they learn it. They speak, they come out from there speaking, wow. speaking the language. What is uh, your view on this uh, perspective that the Portuguese language in India, in Goa today, is not of the same caliber, of the same standard as it was, say, in yeah, 361? Because That's what right. happens, see, see, say, say for some people my age, well, we all spoke Portuguese. Yeah. From childhood, we spoke Portuguese. We spoke As the first we, language. First language, Kokni and Portuguese were our two languages. Yeah. Now, English was never well, there. Nowhere on the scene. Nowhere, English was nowhere. In Kokni and, and, and Portuguese. And for us, it was easy yeah. to, to do the... Uh, do the secondary school in, in, in Portuguese and most of the time we used to go, but the people used to go to Portugal to do the higher studies because yeah. here there were no, not many uh, higher high, high, high education. Uh, high high education. And what happens now, Portuguese will come at the same level of French because French teachers don't speak Portuguese, French. Okay. So now the new generation, Portuguese teachers will not speak Portuguese. Okay. They will, they will teach through English. They yeah. will ask them to translate. They will learn the language, but not uh, the, uh, but not the language with that fluency that we yeah. used to have. Because they themselves don't. They are themselves they, it's not are not, into it, yeah. and they are not teachers themselves are not fluent in language. Yeah. Because they came through English medium, they learned it as second language, whereas we learn in the first language as a medium of instruction. So there is a big difference. So mm -hmm. the le the level will come down. It's expected. Yeah. And we have to accept it because after all, it's a second language. It's not the first language. Second, I'm third language. True. Yes. What is your advice to youngsters wanting to learn Portuguese? How long will it take them? What should be their effort? How much? How many hours a day? At the school level, I don't think that will be much improvement because what they 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 are not interested in language. What they want is math, physics, chemistry. That I'm, uh, I'm, I'm uh, PCM. Uh, PCM. So the PCM is more important. This is side business yeah. so they if they get the passing marks yeah. they are, they are happy but there are students who work uh, do do well in the pcm and also are very keen in learning the language but there's a very few yeah majority 
they get the there are the papers are not that difficult because if we are competing also with sanskrit yeah which Some, which is easy to uh, easiest, subject easy to score in easy easy to score they just yeah. tell you if you don't understand this write the, the answer in, in, in english okay so so that's much easier so what they want is to have good marks that or that they have the the total uh, uh, yeah, score. Uh, score higher so i don't think that it will improve but there will be many more who after doing their schooling they will come back for language yeah they will see the importance of the language later but not now at this school level and how long would it take to learn the language if you are really serious about I, it i tell you another i had a student from i won't tell the name yeah. uh, uh, she, she finished one this book in 15 days i see because she had a, a a target she wanted to go to portugal and start working there i see of course she knows french it helped her yeah uh, to it was easy but before i i i did one unit she used to do the unit at home i see maybe even wrong and then second day come and revision we, revision we will see what is wrong in that way in 15 days she finished one I book see. and then he came out from there speaking portuguese fluently now she's in portugal she started working working in hotel management and that's a good example another example said another student who is from gujarat has yeah. nothing to do with portuguese this girl new french parents speak portuguese whereas the gujarati girl has absolutely no nothing. link with it and she did three levels with me i see and today she's fluent she does it wow. young girl smart so do see. women have a slight advantage when it comes to learning languages could be could be yeah could be. looks be, like yeah. looks it like it looks like it looks like yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 so on this positive note we really uh, congratulate you for this book looking forward to more such work and uh, wishing you all the best and thanking you of course for taking your time and coming here and sharing your views which i think is a very important language even though at goa we don't recognize it fully at this point i'm sure one day in the future it will find its potential yes i hope so yeah thank you so much thank for everything yeah thank you too yeah